Upon hearing that he was about to spend his entire life in prison, this man, stripped naked, turned violent, and even attempted to jump out of the dock in order to escape his lengthy prison sentence. Well, this kind of lashing out is quite common among convicts of all countries because no one wants to spend their entire life in prison. But what did he do? Well, this story begins in Vic Falls on the 15th of July in 2015, where this girl, prison powerful, a 16-year-old Form 4 student from Mosia Tunya High School, left home for school at around 7 a.m. Although her guardians thought that she was only going to school, Praise had other secret plans after school. She had planned a sunset sex round picnic with her boyfriend, Brian Due, a 21-year-old Form 6 student from the very same school. School. Obviously, no sane parent would ever be supportive of their 16-year-old daughter being in a relationship, let alone one that is sexual in nature. But teenagers will be teenagers. After school, they then met up and proceeded to a place known as Big Tree, which is on the banks of the Zambezi River. To those familiar with it, they know that Zambezi River is one of the most beautiful rivers in Zimbabwe, and it was quite serene for their romantic date. They obviously chose this area because it is quite close to the Victoria Falls Big Rain forest and they did not want any distractions. After their sexy time and picnic, two men suddenly approached them. These two men were intimidating and aggressive. They even questioned them what they were doing in a prohibited area. They accused this young couple of trespassing and being on private property, but obviously this was not true because no one can ever own a river or a river bank. Brian, sensing danger, tried to get a hold of his phone so that he could dial for help, but the two men apprehended him and attacked him on the back of his head with a long praise and panicked and screamed for help but one of the men also apprehended her undressed her and took her further into the forest brian could not do anything but watch helplessly as he was being pressed on the ground and his hands were tied behind his back the last thing that brian heard were praises screams for help but then he was hit multiple times on the back of his head again until he lost consciousness praise was brave and fought back from being raped until the man lost in interest and then he hit her head on the ground until she died. When this man saw that he had committed a crime, he then threw her body into the Zambezi River, hoping to get rid of evidence. The two men then assumed that both Brian and Praise had died. They then took their possessions. They took Brian's laptop, earphones, an MP3 player, and Praise's cell phone and fled the scene. Brian was discovered by passers-by and he was taken to the hospital where he regained consciousness. So Praise did not return home on the 15th of July 2015 and obviously her guardians were very worried. They only knew that something had happened to her when the police came to their home narrating what had happened. Upon investigating this case, the police managed to trace Praise's cell phone to two men from Bulawayo. The two men were Augustine Nguwe, a 28-year-old from Pomula North, and Sanganiso Lupasha, a 34-year-old from Old Pomula, also from Bulawayo. After days of searching, Praise and Pofu's body was discovered downstream in the River. It was very difficult to accept that a 16-year-old girl had been murdered senselessly and people wanted to know why. Why did these two men commit such a gruesome murder? The police then arrested these two men and Augustine was even arrested just before he had boarded a South African-bound bus. When detectives interrogated them, they attempted to blame the other for the crime. Augustine blamed Tanganiso and Tanganiso blamed Augustine. Both of them claimed to have had no active role in the actual murder. They tried to project the other as the main perpetrator, but their versions of events kept changing. The police knew that they had the right people because none of them denied being on the crime scene and both of them agreed that they had been together when Praise was murdered. They were also found with possessions that had been taken from the crime scene, which included a laptop, earphones, and an MP3 player. The post-mortem proved that she had died from head trauma and skull fracture, and this alone was evidence to prove the violent nature of of these two men. The court then established that Shamlaniso was the one that had killed Praise and thrown her in the river, and then Augustine was the one that had attacked Brian Dewey. They were then both found guilty of the murder of Praise and Pofu, the attack on Brian Dewey and the robbery. In assessing the sentence, the judge considered that Shamlaniso was a first-time offender and that he was married with kids and was a breadwinner. He also acknowledged that Augustine was also married with kids, but he had a previous rape conviction. All this was how However, insignificant because of the nature of the violence that had been displayed by these two men. The degree of intended and unnecessary violence displayed by these two 
men could not be justified. They had to face the consequences of their actions. Hence, the judge said that these two men deserved to be permanently removed from society so that other kids could be safe. He then sentenced them to 10 years for robbery and life imprisonment for murder of praise and powerful. A young girl full of potential was unnecessarily murdered all because of greed. In my own opinion, these two men deserved what they got. May her soul continue to rest in eternal peace. Hi, I'm Adlene. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to watch my other video right here. Ciao.